Guys, Frontwoods Farmer, what we're doing today is, it's winter time, I said we're getting ready. So we have oil heat, we have an oil furnace, newer furnace, newer dock work. And these lines, they don't come in right. So if you have an oil furnace with a dual 275 tank set up, the way it should run is like these lines should be about in the middle. Those are your lines for your furnace. Your fill pipe should come in, this tank, right there. Cross over out of here into the other tank. Your gauge should be there. And over there, that should be your vent coming out. So fill, fills the tank, pushes out through the other tank, the vent. They'll hear it outside, bloop. When this one's filled, it'll start pushing through the other one. And that's the way it's supposed to vent. We're gonna try to put a whistle vent on there today. I don't know if we're gonna finish this up today, but I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of what we're doing. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you like homesteading, canning videos, farming, hit the subscribe button right now. Thank you. Basically what we're gonna be using to take these apart just a rigid pipe wrench it's an old pipe wrench i think it's a 24 inch wrench i got smaller ones take these vents off first now this is actually you want them all steel piped in or galvanized and they got rubber lines and a rubber is not even flexible anymore it's like hard so i think we're gonna have some trouble i loosen the hose clamps i'm just gonna try to loosen and not take it out if it cracks oh well if you guys don't know about pipe fittings this is a regular 90 90 degrees that's why there's 45s street 90s and 45s which means there's a threaded end on this end of the 90 this is called a pipe nipple you know that's probably one inch nipple there and this is a bushing it reduces the size funny but it's not called a reducer a reducer actually has two female ends there's the female ends and these are the male ends the males go into the female ends clean up your oil the best thing if you got spilled oil and it stinks is dawn dish detergent said my rigid pipe wrench I believe is a little wore out but it's still good for the hexagon fittings which are these this is more of a how-to video now if you're not subscribed and you're just subscribing this is going to probably be one of the most boring videos I've ever done but it's going to be very useful for someone that needs to know this information Some tools you may need for this job. I just got a regular putty knife scraper, I got like an automotive scraper, and a screwdriver to get the old pipe to off. Uh, you may want to get a wire brush. I just didn't bring that in from the barn. You want to scrape all this old stuff off before you take your fitting off so it doesn't fall into the tanks. It's all right to loosen it, but you don't want to take it all away. Good idea if you're using a wire brush. Just do one side at a time. Just stuff this rag down in, like that. If you don't want them little particles, safety glasses is a good idea too. Um, you don't want those little particles in the oil tanks. Get your little scraper. Get some of the big chunks off. That way we don't get any dirt in when we're removing the other lines. Now we're gonna go down here to the next fitting. And somebody really did this heater wrong. Um, they have a, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but they have a, pla a plastic that's illegal, like an ABS plastic, that's what the black plastic is called. 90 gun in here and there's a lot of like silicone pipe dope looking type uh, paste around it that's hardened. So we're gonna clean that off and see what's underneath there. Hopefully they didn't JB weld it and hurt the threads at all. What I was hoping to find under here was a plastic fitting coming out of here with threads, but I'm not seeing it. So I may have to sawzall all this off and then try to twist this nice and easy out. I don't wanna break any plastic into my tank. I don't feel any hexagon fitting. Well, maybe, right? yeah. 
Uh, it feels like it's like a sink fitting, so. Flip around the camera. Show you guys what I'm looking at right here. So who knows what that is. Let's try to maybe get, get her a little piece of rag that's left. I don't think it'll wipe off. It's kind of loose, but it's not that loose. Had that hard crust under it. I think that's what I thought it was. You see these little like dimples here, these little things sticking out. I think that's actually for a sink and somehow they got it in here, but I don't know. So not not a hundred percent sure. So let me go get my saws I will cut this pipe somewhere. see if we can unscrew this now. Okay, so it's unscrewing. I'm sure they threaded something in. I was not sure if they maybe stuck a piece of pipe on there and just kind of like JV welded or something around here. So, I guess they did not, which is good for me. Might be able to just get this out perfect. stuff on here try to get most of that off and then get a broom a broom would work fine and I'm making this video not because I'm just wanting to show you guys what I'm doing today although I know my subscribers enjoy that but I'm doing this because a lot of these old farms they had these old oil tanks and there's nothing wrong with the tank if they're inside like this but they didn't vent them or put the fills or gauges or whistle vents, nothing correctly. Not all of them, but a lot of them didn't. They were just, as you know, with a farm, just trying to get it done. You just, you know, they got to get heat. And then they have every intention, like me, on doing it the right way. And then a lot of times they're on to the next project before they want to because they have to. So that is why I'm making this video. Again, we're going to get a piece of rag. Now that that's pretty clean, there's some of this big stuff we can get off. Again, if you're not covering that, hit your hit your stuff away from the hole. See, it all goes away from the hole. All we're doing is making this very easy for us to measure for the next time that we get our pipe. Something like that should be good enough. Now this is our fill. Eventually, I'd like to move this. But we're gonna have to come off the wall. I wanna come straight, but we're not gonna be able to because of the sandstone foundation. It's like two foot thick. We're not gonna take any more out than we need to. It's already a hole. So I'll probably leave this here, do everything in a straight line to the tanks, and then we'll have to move it over to the wall. So we're gonna leave this alone right now. We're gonna go over to the other tank. Now remember, this is kind of the setup that it's gonna be. This is gonna cross over and you're gonna fill it. So we're gonna actually use this nipple. I didn't realize this was galvanized. This is all steel. We're gonna just turn it, use the 90 out of there over here with the short nipple and connect it to with a union. But I don't want the whole plastic to drop and crack on the outside. We're not ready for that yet. So I'm gonna cut it here on the inside and then we'll cut it over there and take a section out. Good idea to move your tools off here. Before we go to the next step, a good idea would be if you were leaving this job soon to stick a rag in that fill because you don't want an animal to get through there, a chipmunk or anything. They will do that. And what we're probably end up gonna do is we're gonna take this off anyway and put new Teflon and or pipe dope on that. And that is a sealant that you're gonna use so the oil doesn't escape out of the fiddle. 
Lowe's or Home Depot or any hardware store should have all this. Then we're just going to come down here. We're going to do the same thing and clean all the fittings. A little bit better of a look. This pipe dope really doesn't come off of this with this wire. Brush too great, but it's gonna knock everything off that you don't want in your tank. Probably end up painting these. Here's our gauge here. I'm having a feeling they had the same duct tape style sealant they did. So, and that's what it is. I wonder if that's some kind of an asbestos tape. I'm not sure. So that might be some kind of an asbestos tape. I don't know. Either way, it's coming off. be careful if you have to reuse these gauges they are like a pot metal and from what I can remember there's a bobber down in these and what you have to do you take these gauges out take this off okay Pick this up. And what that's going to do is allow you to turn this because that bobber goes down on an armature. So it's going to hit the side of the tank. Uh -huh. That's what I thought. Check the bobber, make sure it's working correctly. Just from taking this out, it's all breaking apart. We don't want that in our fuel tank. Let's try to get this swung around here, out of the tank, and that's gonna need replaced. All right, now that we have that gauge out, we're just gonna lay a rag on here, maybe a tool, and then uh, we're gonna go do a parts run and hopefully get everything we need to get started. So this is an old Scully signal gauge I have. Also known as a whistle vent. So it'll give you the same inlet and outlet. I'm sure there's different kinds that can, you can change that. So this will just thread in your tank. This. Go, this is part of your vent now and it'll go out the wall. As the oil man is filling the tank, it's gonna whistle. And then it'll shut off when it's done filling the 20, 30 minutes, however long it takes. So you'll hear the whistle, then it'll fade. The fuel man on that and then also over here we have a scully that's the company we use of our brand new fuel gauge this is new old stock that i've had for quite a few years and this is what that'll look like and notice it's not all broken apart it's a brand new bobber it'll have two different styles i believe it's inch and a quarter and inch and a half or maybe inch and a half and two inch i believe that's what it is so it'll fit a few different tanks and this is what we're gonna we're gonna change this now over to here and again like we took the old one off you're going to unscrew this glass hold it up screw it down in the new but we're going to still go to the store get the fittings we need to get some of the plumbing done this is why we're going to just cut these down in sections now you notice you don't want a 20 foot pipe you're trying to hold on to now we just have small sections we can keep chopping it off
I just got back from the store. Now, the hardware store. If you're gonna do the plumbing on your oil tanks, what you want is this non-Teflon. It's hard to see brand and everything, but you want something without Teflon in it because for oil furnaces, Teflon will destroy them. A little terminology so you know what you're asking for. This is a nipple. This is a male end. It threads into the female end. This is a union. This is a three-piece union. It unscrews so you can couple a pipe together. That's definitely different from a coupling. You have another nipple. These are separate. See the nipples? They unscrew. And that is a one and a half inch elbow. Not to be confused with a street elbow, which has a male and female end. Notice the regular elbow has two females. So different applications. Here's just an oil cap we picked up, 25 bucks. Goes on one side. There's a short nipple. Here is a one and a half inch cap. A cap is a female threaded cap. And a plug is a male threaded plug. A bushing reduces your size down, male to female. They have reduce or not reducers, they have uh, couplings, they are female to female, and they have reducers that are female to female and adapters. And that's a quick terminal. In this certain situation, we're gonna start at our farthest end from where our fill is gonna be on the outside of the home. And then we're gonna just work our way towards it. So instead of putting in your fuel gauge now, you'd wanna to wait to do that and put in all your hard piping first. That way you don't knock it around. We're gonna actually start on that far end where the vent is going and we're gonna put our whistle vent in first. Remember this is when it fills, it'll whistle through this pipe. When it's done being filled and the liquid touches the bottom of the whistle, you know, you still got some headroom for heat and things like that. So it's then that the guy outside is gonna know it's done. Apologize, the lighting's a little crappy down here, but you just, uh, see if we, you can see that. You just wanna apply a thin layer. Stuff's a little cold, but you're just gonna want a thin layer like this. Okay, you're gonna want that all the way around your threads. And that's what you want right there, just a thin layer around that male thread we're gonna thread into the female end on the tank bung. Also, that's gonna be on our vent side. You want your vent to be the same size, if not larger than your fill pipe. That way, as fast as you can fill it, it's always gonna vent out. That way the fuel doesn't blow up in the guy's face on the outside of the home. You wanna be careful not to cross thread, which is not putting it in directly straight. You never should force it. Should always go kind of smooth by hand like that. Now that that's in, we can put our 90 to go over to keep continuing on plumbing in our vent. Now we have our street 90 attached to our whistle vent and it's tight in our last bung. Now I only got a limited amount of time before our hardware store closed. So I'm gonna skip over to the crossover and just make sure we have the right nipple for that. So this is what I have left of the crossover, the old crossover from the one side. So I bought the union, the nipple, and then the, re the other nipple a 90 degree to complete the crossover. So all I'm gonna do, since these are all tight and not leaking, I'm just gonna put some more thread sealing on there and get it on that first tank. So our next step in the process in putting this crossover over, you can't actually, you have to eventually finish your threads. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is you thread this in, then you thread that in, then you thread this pipe in, then you thread the elbow on. And then when you're threading in this, you're gonna be, it's not gonna work. You can't thread it all in. So to join the two together, you're just gonna do this same thing over here and half the crossover. And this three piece union is where that comes into play. It'll just keep swinging past here, and then you know you'll be so close, and this will yank the two together, and it'll join the two pipes. And that's how that works. 
They're both just got like a flare fitting. They join and thread on. Okay, so now we're gonna put this short nipple into this other tank bung for the crossover. And you wanna thread that in first, then thread on your 90, thread in your pipe, put it all together and then we'll couple it together with our union. Now we're at the point where we're gonna install our gauge. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take your top off, your sight glass. You're gonna set that aside. Remember this is a mechanical gauge, so you're just gonna get the float in. This. Now remember, you're gonna to wanna to lift this up that does that's so it doesn't hit the sides of your tank because if that armature is down it's gonna flop around and hit your, hit your tank there and they even have an arrow on it to where the armature falls ideally you want it towards the vent not the crossover so when they're filling it if you want to watch your tanks it's not gonna flop as bad up and down but it doesn't really matter. You don't really, there's no need to watch your gauges. Maybe able to actually fit where we want it. This is like a pot metal, so you wanna, you wanna be extra careful with these threads. And then you just wanna put your sight glass back on. These have an O-ring in them. So there's not really much of a reason to crank them down. And that's it. That's it. Now you can see level in your tanks. Okay, everybody. So we ran into some difficulties. So what we're going to have to do is take a break from the crossover. And I'm going to have to go down to the hardware store and get piping for that. So in the meantime, we're going to run the fill pipe, which is we're going to reduce that down to inch and a half because you always want your fill pipe to be smaller or equal size to your vent pipe crossover can stay bigger now the what we're having problems with is i think these bungs which is the hole down there on our crossovers they were kind of v they were bent so i'm going to make this side here longer than this side here and then hopefully that union is going to bring this side up and make this straight across if not we're going to have to eliminate both these tanks and get new tanks i don't want to go there so let's go ahead, let's get some of our pipe dope, Teflon, whatever you want to call it, which there's no Teflon in this pipe dope because that eats oil tanks. Uh, not oil tanks, it eats the oil furnaces. We're gonna use our inch and a half by two inch bushing. We could use our street 90, I'm not sure yet. Uh, we also have a regular 90. It's just how we want to go thinking of the vent side or fill side, we don't want to kind of collide them together. So I might bring it up, I might not. Get our pipe dope again. We're gonna put some of this on our bushing. Like that. Normally we could use our little brush, but we're a little low on our pipe dope. Now that we got a good coat on that, especially on these bushings, they seem to countersink more than the nipples and everything else. I don't understand why. Y'all wanna be careful not you want to be careful not to cross thread. So what I do is I kind of get a reverse until it falls into place. Then I start my thread again. There you go. There you go. Get to see, it always will get you in straight. All, all of these holes on these tanks seem like they had too much pressure on them at one time. And they're all bent, which is not good. So hopefully we have no leaks. We'll get the wrench on that it's like a cooking video it's like first we get a little wrench then a little bit of dope well that didn't sound good oh you know what i mean all right so if you look down there 
we have a street two inch 90, which is a little taller than a street one and a half inch 90. And we have that in a whistle vent. So I'm assuming a little thinner than the whistle vent. Not thinner, I'm sorry. Well, thinner, taller, whatever. But smaller than the whistle vent is this one and a half by two bushing. So we're just gonna use this smaller one and a half street 90 than a two inch. And I think that'll get us proper height adjustment for both pipes, the fill and the vent. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in and do the same, put the top. Same way, just the thin coat all the way around. And you do wanna be a little more cautious. This is the fill side. This is what could potentially leak. The vent side can leak in an event where the oil man is filling the tank and he overfills the tanks and it is holding oil in the vents. However, that shouldn't happen, but it does happen. Don't panic. If it does, you may have a, a, a mess to clean up, but that happens. There's really no need to call the DEP. You can dispose of everything properly as long as it doesn't get contact with anything in the water. So Dawn dish detergent for cleaning oil is your best friend and borax to get the smell out. So we'll tighten this on and then we'll measure for a nipple against the wall like we did on our bed. Once again, I went to the hardware store and we could only get a limited supply of our pipe nipples. The longer ones we're gonna have to have made. He didn't have time today. We got what we needed to do the crossover. So we're gonna throw that on real quick, show you how that looks complete. Then we're just gonna save the rest of these and we're just gonna do a part two because I wanna show you guys a little footage of everything going on around here. And if this video takes two or three weeks, that's two or three weeks of you guys waiting. And I don't wanna drag this out too long. So we'll do a part one. Then hopefully the part two within a week will be done. And then that way you guys get some nice footage on these oil tanks, do it yourself videos. And then we get back to more farm and stuff. Thanks guys. Okay, just like the other pipes, we have this two inch nipple. All pipe doped up and going in here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten this side here first. Once we get this here tight, we're gonna put our other piece of our union down there on this side, bring these both out. And the idea behind the theory is to join these together and then screw our collar from our three piece union, our first, second, and our third piece on, and this should join together and kind of even out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that on. I don't need to film that and I'll film us joining these together and we'll see how it works. And if you see, that's all lined. That's how that seal, that seal's made. I think I showed you guys before. So like a compression fitting, flare fitting. Remember your collar goes on, on first. Then you're gonna to wanna to put your piece of union on. We'll get that tightened up and then we'll show you how we're gonna join these together. All right, as you guys can see, this is where the problem lies. Some of this is kind of tweaked. I don't know if it's stripped. I don't know if it's the bung, the hole. I don't know, but that's gonna be hard to close that gap. So I did fortunately just break my camera mount. So I'm gonna have to try to get a weird angle here and push up on these pipes and get this thread started so it don't cross it. And I'm hoping this will straighten out as it pulls together. And we got it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I tighten this up. And hopefully that won't lift the other side of the tank. And it'll just pull this together. And you, this is where, everywhere you don't wanna leak when he's filling. Cause this is, if this leaks, that won't be good. Might be a, not a bad idea to try to put some pressure up here, but I'm working alone. So it's gonna, those to be a little difficult. Five or 20 pounds of force might be enough to lift this up and straighten her out. So just do your best. But the way that compression fitting is, it shouldn't leave him much, much choice but to, to go in there, right? So. I think right now it's starting to bring that up. Oh yeah, that's perfect. And it's tight in there, so. He like said, as long as it don't pull the other side of the tank up, we should be all right. It was going to do that here. 
the leg's just a hair off the ground. I mean, you can't even stick a fingernail under there. So all we're gonna have to do is tweak that leg down, tweak that back leg down. And that's the way these things work. These are just a piece of pipe nipple in here. And that's how your adjustable legs work. Generally, you could get different length legs. However, we have enough room. I mean, there's over a finger width and not down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew that and lengthen that leg. Just like that. Okay, so that's a lot better than it was. I got just that one leg adjusted a hair and it seemed to be touching the ground. They're all touching the ground. The only thing I don't like, but I'm not sure if it was like it before and just from the tanks being a little low. I don't know if you guys can see them. These tanks are wiggling, but it's just on the ground. So I'm gonna plumb it all and then fasten all the lines together. If it don't stiffen it up, I might end up welding some cross supports or something to keep these tanks here. Not that I think anything's gonna happen to them, but just for a safety precaution, we have little kids and animals. I don't want these tanks to ever flop over by accident. So if I need to, I'll put a strap around them from the wall, but yeah, that's about it. All right, guys, I really wanted to do this in a one part episode. However, with the hardware store and everywhere being low on inventory and stock right now, and just the time it takes to make these pipe nipples, we're gonna do this as a part one and a part two series. On the part two, it should be a little more interesting. We're gonna finish up in here and then go on the outside. We're gonna adapt from what most people do would be like a normal cinder block wall that's hollow. We actually have about two feet of sandstone. We got a beam, we got a floor joist in the way. So things are gonna get interesting. So all you guys restoring these old Victorian homes and old farmhouses like we have here, this may help you, it may not help you. Uh, we might even look into getting some sort of a concrete saw for outside. I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet, but yeah, watch for the part two. Also, I wanted to tell you guys, if you don't click the bell notification and you're subscribed to the channel, you're not gonna see all my new videos. You're probably gonna see 10 to 20% of my videos and that's it. Uh, you could click on the channel and then click on to the right the video icon where it says videos not home or uploads and that should list all my videos in a time fashion I didn't get a chance to create any playlist yet I don't know how to do it and I don't have a computer yet I'm working on it however if you are not subscribed to the channel and you like this stuff this is a boring video you're gonna love the other things the animal videos we got Remy went viral the other day with our Mastiff click on the subscribe right now even the old guys click on the bell notification i appreciate all you guys thank you and watch for part two we should have that uploaded within a week or less have a good day